What's going on guys? It's Gordon the Power Sports Tech and I'm coming at you with the first video at uh, our new place. Um, this video is long overdue. We've been here since November but uh, just been super busy and it's taken a while to kind of get it to the point I'm at. It's still pretty messy but uh, yeah. So anyways we're gonna kind of take a quick tour. It's not a large space that I have to work in now but we do have a garage at the new place so um, at least now I do have a space that's enclosed and I can keep my sled and that in here, but, uh, let's dive into it. Okay. So, uh, this is the new kind of shop slash, uh, work area. So it's uh, just a single car garage. Um, let's see if I can zoom you out here. Yeah, there we go. Um, so it's just a single car garage, but... Uh, it does give me kind of room to work on stuff, so <clears throat> we just have our kind of apartment entrance there, and then there's, uh, that's kind of just outside to our kind of like back area out there. Um, it is kind of dark in here, so I do apologize for that. Uh, there's not a whole lot of light, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if uh, how long we're going to actually stay here, and I might, um, I might put up a light uh, just kind of somewhere like up there just to add some light over what really is the main work area but uh yeah so as you can see I finally have my outboards in here um so this guy at some point uh hopefully before the winter's over even though it's kind of coming to an end here from the way the weather's been um i gotta dive into this i have the midsection the the upper thrust mounts they're shot and i have new um well i have ones that i'm making or i had made for it so the ones from evan Root are ridiculously priced they're like 130 bucks a piece and uh, i did find a forum or a website where a guy makes his own using the engine mount rubbers and then he turns a couple bushings down on a lathe so i already had the bushings made for me I didn't, and i have a whole bunch of other stuff i'm doing this too i'm probably going to tear it right down and just take a look, put new rings in it, but that'll all be in a different video. Um, the 9.8, that'll be sold or up for sale this uh, spring along with my old boat. So that uh, hopefully is going to be gone come the summertime, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, at least now I've got them inside. It's not heated in here, but it is warmer in here than it is outside. Um, so I've got them on the stand and then just my spare parts down there like I've got... Um, I think somewhere down there, there's a seven and a half, uh, horse motor. That's just the top end, I believe somewhere down there. And it's, it's blown up, but it's good for parts. Cause the nine, eight and the seven and a half is the same motor. It's just, uh, just has a different, I believe it's a different carburetor. Um, it's been a while since I've been looking into that. So anyways, that's where they're kind of staying. Basically this whole side of the garage is just our storage area. So uh, summer tires and just other shit in here like skates and I don't know tent blah 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 all that stuff um, <clears throat> got a spot for my ramps um, and then just boxes from Christmas uh, but as you can see I got the sled in here so we've been able to get out a couple times um, I did put a two-up seat on it this uh, this year and I just got the handles this lighting is terrible so that's kind of hard to see um so yeah that uh that definitely helped out um i don't have the gas caddy on it right now it's on the floor over here um but yeah so i keep it in here it doesn't really thaw it out to the point where all the snow melts off of it usually uh it's been warm so everything's gone that was on it but if it stays cold then it doesn't really melt away but at least it's inside it's not outside so i do have a spot i can work on that in here um, I did manage to pick up just a cheap workbench, found it on Kijiji for like 50 bucks or I don't even remember what I paid for it to be quite honest with you. So yeah, I got a, at least a spot to work on, an old laptop for looking up parts and whatnot. Um, my girlfriend bought me a vice, so I have that. Um, and then just kind of storage up above it. So spray paints and that, that's all from the boat and spare oil for the sled and uh, whatnot. Um, the really cool thing though is all the posters that I've been able to uh, save from work, I finally have 
some of them put up. I still have like obviously all like all of that. I think right there. I think that's all of them. Yeah, everything right beside that oil drum is all posters. Um, so I do have that kind of all up. I mean, I don't know. It took long enough just to get this stuff up, so I'm not going too crazy out here. But it is kind of nice, um, even though I don't own a Polaris sled. The posters are still cool to have up. Um, my old toolbox. Some of you might remember when I uh, started my uh, the job that I'm at now. Um, I had this there. I've upgraded that Milwaukee box. If you've seen my tool uh, toolbox tour, then you'll know that. Um, so it lives out here now. Um, I have somewhat loaded it up with some new tools. So I've got uh, they're all just Mastercraft stuff for at home, and then stuff I replace at work I bring home too. So. Um, a lot of the maximum Mastercraft maximum, or if you're in the States craftsman, same thing. Um, I got, uh, their maximum series stuff. So three eight sockets, I bought a quarter inch set. I've got like Torx and Allen bits. So that's all kind of, um, coming together, slowly building that up. I am really dying for pliers. Um, but yeah, the old set of screwdrivers and that, um, I'm not going to go through the whole the whole box unless somebody wants me to there's not really much in there for for tools but there's enough to get me by at home um an oil drum that was from work it's empty i'm gonna turn that into a garbage can uh, but the really cool thing is over the holidays i was able to pick up this is gonna be very hard to see because it's super dark in here but i was able to pick up a shop press wow that's dark um it's just a 12 ton shop press, but I got it brand new on a really good deal from Princess Auto. So, you know, not your top of the line, but it's better than not having a press at all. Um, so yeah, I have that, uh, my sled lift. I've had that for years now. Um, I've just never really used it a whole lot. Um, I find that the sled lift's only good for doing maybe like preseason maintenance stuff, or if you have engine work or something that's not in the rear skid because it gets in the way of the skid and the track to really do a whole lot. Like you could do sliders, um, but if you're like to pull a track out or to pull a skid off, I don't recommend that. I just flip the unit on its side and it's 10 times easier. Um, I did get, it's tough to see, but down there, I got an air compressor for Christmas. Um, so that's nice, I do have air. Uh, and then I actually picked up a, you can't really see it cause it's so dark in here, but I did pick up a welding cart over the holidays as well. So I've got my welder sitting on that now, um, which is really nice. And that's actually a very well built cart for the price. I think I paid like 50 bucks or something for that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but, um, yeah. So yeah, again, not a super huge space, but it's better than nothing. Um, I mean, at least now I can either film videos out here. Um, you can see how dark it is in here. So I, I'm thinking of putting a light maybe up there somewhere above the, if I can, somewhere above the uh, the garage door because most of the time it's going to be down anyways in the winter time. Um, I do have like a space heater, but I haven't tried it out here yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of what we're working with. Um, definitely coming along. Uh, yeah, I mean the first project I think that I'll end up filming out here is gonna be that uh, that Evinrude 99, which I have a 15 horsepower car to go on. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, but uh, yeah. So I got some other parts and just junk down there, stuff for the, I, I, for those of you that don't know, I have a 1980 Kawasaki Drifter 340. Um, I picked up a second clutch on eBay for it over the, the, I think holidays, kind of somewhere in there. Um, so I'm going to use that because the primary on mine has a small hairline crack in it. And just to be safe, I picked that up. I'm going to use parts from that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I know this video, like it says, long overdue. I said it was going to make it just after Christmas, but things kind of got hectic, and uh, we've had, honestly, nothing but problems with this place. But we're making it work for now, so, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, again, it's just a little kind of walkthrough of what I have to work with now. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention is over the holidays for Christmas, I got a tripod. I actually got two of them, but... Um, so I will have that, uh, I can put my phone in it and have a much better angle 
um, for when I do start shooting videos. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, everything kind of starts panning out here. I'm going to have to dive into that, that outboard at some point soon. Uh, I do have some work to the sled that needs to be done. I got some straps and that to replace. Um, and I do have some clutch work, so uh, I might film that. I don't know. Uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. But uh, yeah, so anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, again, sorry that it's been such a long long wait time on the video but uh yeah if you did like this video please like it and uh if you want to see more videos from me just click the subscribe button and yeah i'll catch you next time